I'm Nancy Schultz, and I'm the current president of Sustainable Newton, and we welcome tonight Mike Hopkins, who is the executive director of the Newton County Water and Sewer Authority. And Mike is, Mike and I worked together when I was on the board of commissioners, and I, I can honestly say that Mike is probably one of the greatest gifts that we have in Newton County. And he really understands the treasure that we have in terms of our water and how to protect it. And um, I'm very thrilled that he agreed to come on tonight and talk with us a little bit about one of the one of our treasured resources in the county. We, none of us can live without water. And we have a great source of water and um, it's important for us to protect it. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mike and let him take the floor. I will tell everyone that we have about 30 minutes allocated to Mike. He has a presentation, but he also told us prior to um, starting the meeting that if anyone wanted to ask any questions, please feel free to do so. If you want to uh, raise your hand in the chat, um, I can um, unmute you and uh, let you ask your question, or I can ask the question for you, either one. But I, at this point, I'm not going to belabor the point any longer, and I'm going to turn it over to Mike. So welcome, Mike Hopkins. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nancy. Um, what an intro. It's going to be hard to live up to that one. Uh, can you, am I sharing, can y'all see the screen? Is it in present, is it in uh, presentation mode or? Can you, can well, you... I have it set up to where you can share the, sp the screen, but I don't see that you're sharing it at this point. There we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now, is that full screen for everybody? That's full screen. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank y'all for, for letting me come tonight. Um, I, I, I am a Newton County native, so, uh, as of Thursday, I'll, I would have been here all 62 years of my life. I love this place. I grew up, um, I've seen it change an awful lot. I've, I've seen where roads didn't exist that exist now, and and some of the places that were special have been gone or developed and uh, just change. You know, living outside of metro area, uh, you know, things things are happening for us here in Newton County. And and as Nancy said, water is a critical source um, or resource for us. So I've been at the Water and Sewer Authority for 27 years. Uh, we turned 54 in April, so almost 50% of the, the life of the Water Authority, I've, I've been a part of it. And I will say this, you know, I've seen it. I've seen not only the Water Authority in Newton County change, but I've seen the water industry change. Uh, back when I first got into business, it was a commodity. Everybody said sell every gallon. There was no conservation. Uh, there was no uh, thought process of sharing it with other folks or making it a resource that we needed to share. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it caused some difficulties. And we're seeing it now, as Nancy said, it is a precious resource. And we need to figure out how, uh, as our earth, as we continue to grow on our earth, how do we, how do we, improve that where other people can have adequate water uh, because it's not available everywhere. Uh, you know, a lot of places still suffer from clean drinking water and no sanitation. And when it's in that mode, uh, people suffer, they die. And, and that's the unfortunate thing. And it doesn't have to be that way. There's technology, uh, there's opportunity there. So didn't want to get into to, to that speech, uh, but I did want to say that you know, I have seen it change and I, I appreciate your group and I really hope that we can, can work together um, and make Newton a sustainable um, uh, area as we continue to go. So you see. OK, so uh, our chairman, our current chairman, um, uh, Marcelo Baines, uh, in 2016 is, is trying to unify our community, came up with this slogan of one Newton. And um, so, um, as, as I'll talk about in just a minute, you know, we like to say one Newton. We also like to say one water. And, and the reason uh, for that is uh, here on the left, you see Newton County. We're blessed to have four rivers, South River, Yellow River, Alcove. You got east and west forks of the Bear Creek. And then you got the Little River, which is in this headwaters over near Social Circle, Stanton Springs area, you know, the south 
South River originates, you know, out under Turner Field, the old Atlanta Braves ball field up in Atlanta. So, um, and the Yellow River comes out of Gwinnett and has a lot of impact from wastewater discharge, which is which has been cleaned tremendously in the last 15 years and is, is a better quality of water there now. Um, one of the great things about Newton County, we're in the upper uh, basin of the Old Mulgee off the Maha River Basin, and you'll see that on the right. And what, what's special about it is, in deference to um, the Chattahoochee, the Flint, and Apalachicola, is we're not sharing this water basin with another state. And so we're not spending large amounts of money in litigation uh, about um, who's downstream and how much water uh, they need to uh, receive in order uh, to keep their way of life in function. So we're really blessed. And, you know, when the Altamaha, I mean, the Old Muggy and the Oconee will run together and form the Altamaha. If you ever get a chance to go down uh, to Darren and go up into the Altamaha sections there, it is an amazing uh, ecosystem there. I mean, you've got saltwater fish, birds, and everything mixed into that environment. And it just goes to show you how critical it is not only to us to live, but also the, 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 the wildlife and, and the ecosystem down there. It's really a special place, special river. So we're blessed to, to be at the very headwaters of it. And uh, that's pretty amazing. So let's see. So who are we? So the Newton County Water and Sewage Authority, Newton uh, County is has a unique water system. And, and so real briefly on that, there's one other system in the state of Georgia that's like us, and that's Cobb Marietta, where uh, the County Board of Commissioners owns the lake, the reservoir, and the treatment facilities. And once the water is treated, it's put in our distribution system, and we deliver it to eight other wholesale customers of the county. So very, very unique. Typically, authorities or commissions uh, have both sides of that equation. And so I can say it has always been great, but I, probably the last 10 to 15 years, it has really uh, been a positive relationship. And we've got some quality people working there, but it is different uh, here. So we, we don't have a lot of control over what we get. Uh, but when we work in partnerships, we get uh, some of the best drinking water in the state of Georgia. Two years in a row with blind taste testing. So as Nancy said, to open up, we do have some good quality water here. Um, you know, we, uh, from a standpoint of not beating bottled water down, it has its place. Uh, but there are issues uh, with that and as far as regulation and, you know, the discharge of the plastic. We have outlawed it at all of our facilities. So if you come to the Water and Sewer Authority and visit us, bring your water bottle. Uh, we'll give you some uh, clean, safe, free drinking water that you can have. And uh, we feel like if we're going to uh, provide it to everybody, we're going to drink it ourselves. And so, um, but uh, as you see here on this map, uh, you see the big circle in the middle, the orange circle and the river coming along to the, to I guess it would be, you're right here is the Alcove River. The Alcove River starts up in Gwinnett, Winder, Barra, uh, comes down through Loganville. It is mostly a swamp for its almost 70 something miles, which is great uh, because that takes a lot of, uh, gives a lot of pre filtration um, to our reservoir. And um, our reservoir cannot sustain itself, uh, it could not sustain itself with Cornish Creek and Little Cornish Creek probably for the last 20 years, uh, just due to growth. And we knew that was coming. And so we have what's called a pump storage reservoir. So we have uh, EPD limits that says as long as the water is over a certain uh, CFS in the Alcove River, we can pump it and fill the lake. And so we keep the lake full uh, because none of us know when the next drought is going to occur. And so, um, you know, if we, we have the lake constantly full when that day comes and we have that drought like we did in 07, uh, the historic mm -hmm. drought there, uh, you know, we can we can survive until the next hopeful rainy season or we can restore uh, ourselves with that. So um, along with that, uh, we work hand in hand with the county. The city of Covington is a major player, Walton County. 
um, is, is a large customer as well. And we have been doing exhaustive studies. We're almost wrapping up another one, what we call the One Newton Roadmap, uh, which takes us out to 2075. On, uh, so we're looking. So when we say that there's enough water, uh, you know, we, we've done a lot of investigation in that. We are actively working with economic development on the local and state level about, you know, the, the industries that we're bringing in, make sure that they're willing uh, to do some unique and different things in order to preserve and protect um, our water supply. I, I do know that, you know, when we had those historic drought 2007, Governor Purdue had the 2010 Water Stewardship Act. And what that has done over the course of, of the last 13, 14 years is it has allowed um, conservation practices up here in Metro Atlanta um, and where a lot of demand is coming from. And more people are moving to the state and we're using less water than we did back prior to 2010, which is how we're going to be able to do it. That's the low hanging fruit to me is how do we continually let more people come to our communities and how do we use the water? We have to use it wisely. We have to account for every drop, every gallon. Uh, I know for us, I mean, we really need to work on our conservation efforts. I'll be the first to tell you that um, we're, we're doing an inadequate job of doing that. Um, we're certainly the big item, the reuse facility at Stan Springs is really a, a, a you know big and cutting edge but i mean on the local level the low-hanging fruit that we need to work with our customers uh, we really need to step up our game to do that and, and and when we do that i think we'll see the positive results yes ma'am um mike i know um you know i've taught environmental science at oxford for a, a good lo long time and um one of the things that we had the opportunity to do was to go through uh, General Mills and see the wonderful recycling program that they had set up. And I think I want to say they set it up before the drought. So it was a, a big, you know, real um, opportunity to show how businesses can really make a difference. Is there any movement to, uh, you, you mentioned businesses, uh, are, are there conversations with businesses as they come in about doing things like what General Mills has done? Yes, ma'am. I mean, we it's at the forefront for us. I mean, it's not a, you know, everybody expects a lot from, from every utility uh, when these big in, industries come in to incentivize. Uh, we, have, we have stood pretty firm and strong on that. We really appreciated the example General Mills um, you know, showed during that time because they were one of cut or were cutting and might still be their largest customer. And so, you know, all the industries coming in now, um, you know, have a company standard of having to do reduction in, in utilities, especially in water and sewer. And I'll talk a little bit about the Rivian. That's that's a touch point for a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and what we've experienced. Uh, with that, the significant reductions in, in their willingness to help and work with that. And that brought about the reuse facility down at Stanton Springs. Uh, so, yes, ma'am, we're, we're, we're well aware that, you know, we've got to make sure that uh, we cannot have an industry lock up our capacity. Uh, and because, you know, unused capacity is the most expensive capacity. Uh, and that ties it up where people can't get to it that we need to have access it. So, uh, Meta, Takeda, those large industries coming in have all been at the front of trying to do better uh, in water conservation. So we're excited about that. We're taking it, taking advantage of that. Um, and so that certainly helped us. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. But thank you for your question. Um, this next slide here, uh, you know, like I said, we're, we're one of two utilities in the state of Georgia that has it back and forth between separate entities. So we were created in 1970 from the state legislature. So we're separate from, from Newton County Commit Board of Commissioners. And uh, when you've got the city of Covington, which is a, a municipality, a separate, their own entity. So we all have our own systems. And, uh, you know, that seems like it would be somewhat hard to work. And sometimes it could, can be, or has been, but uh, this last decade or so has been very fruitful for us, and I think we're setting the table for, for moving ahead. We know if we don't work together, it's going to be unaffordable. 
uh, for us all to to process and, and, and provide what we need to provide. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how that's, you know, affected across the country. Some of the challenges you see in Flint, Michigan, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, places like that uh, where, you know, uh, it, it all comes down to funding, too. I mean, things are very expensive in our industry. And, uh, you know, being able to work together and not let things run to failure, uh, but doing preventive maintenance and, and cleaning and care uh, makes a huge difference. So um, that is just a kind of a, like a workflow diagram of, of, of how it all works. And it, it, it's, it's, it's really working well. So let's let's go to the east and let's talk about Stamp Springs. Uh, here you see this overhead photo of Takeda Pharmaceuticals, which was the first industry that came to the Stanton Springs Development in, uh, Park in 2012. A uh, beautiful facility, um, employs a little over 1,200 workers. Nancy, you were a commissioner there. I think you were out front ringing the bell uh, for all those jobs that were coming into our community. Uh, I would say that uh, we were very successful uh, with this industry here uh, coming in. Um, that was under uh, Governor Nathan Beal's tenure uh, there. And so first for Stanton Springs. So it's set for almost 18 years uh, with no tenants. And then all of a sudden we get this $2 billion pharmaceutical company with 1,200 employees. So very nice. Uh, if you look down in the, the bottom of the screen there, you see the Georgia Bioscience Center, which is the training facility that Governor Deal in the state of Georgia provided for Takeda. And yes, that is real grass in that atrium there or that uh, hole in the middle. Um, and uh, it is uh, a, a very unique building, high-tech training facility. Uh, so Takeda can onboard people and bring them into the industry. It's really important what they do as far as immune deficiency work. Uh, great recession-proof um, industry uh, there. Um, when Takeda came, there was one 12-inch water main. Uh, that came from uh, the hub junction, and there was absolutely no sewer. And so when they came, they said, we need a million gallons of water, and we need a million gallons of sewer. And I said, wow, where are you going to get that from? And uh, so uh, working uh, with our chief engineer, and talk a little bit about him in a minute, uh, we were able to, to run a conveyance, wastewater conveyance back to our Yellow River plant just south of Port of Vail, $15 million uh, worth of investment uh, for them to come online there. And uh, we were able to provide the water and sewer uh, for them. And, and they, they're our largest customer, almost about 600,000 gallons a day of water and wastewater. So heavy water user, uh, but are, are really interested in the new Reeves facility. So uh, the, the cleared spot right there to a little bit above the screen there, right directly across from the Bioscience Center, is where our reuse facility will go. And so uh, when we talk reuse, uh, here was something that we had to do with these large industries coming in because you got Takeda at a million gallons of water and wastewater a day. You got the two um, Facebook Meta campuses at uh, almost uh, a million two in water and about 800,000 gallons in sewer. And then, then you have the Rivian uh, uh, industry, uh, electric vehicle industry coming in uh, that started out at 9 million gallons of water a day and about 5 million gallons of sewer a day. So through two years worth of discussions, uh, the reuse facility, uh, their willingness to take uh, this reclaimed water, which is non-potable, uh, one level short of being drinking water. We did not want to get in the drinking water business as the authority, but we felt like we could use this industrial reclaimed system uh, for them. So now we're down to right under a million gallons a day for Rivian. So, you know, we started at, at, at right about nine for water, which was undoable. We told the state that. We told the governor uh, but, uh, you know, they were supportive and in, in, in allowing us to look at some alternatives and we decided on the reuse. So, so this is a rendering. So we're, we, we broke ground um, back in November. Okay. Dates fly by for me now. So th th this will be the reuse facility 
here, uh, this building and tankage is right beside the Bioscience Center. We'll show you that, um, you know, just a basic metal building uh, with some, some rock and uh, some monitors on top, natural light, roll-up doors, uh, pretty generic. Um, inside is where it all happens, high-tech. So I'll uh, just start part of this. Uh, it won't run through all of it. Hmm. One or two operators can handle this. It can go up to 5.5 million. We do use reverse osmosis and ultrafiltration. Ultrafiltration is not as stringent as RO. And so when we talk RO, Sorry, let me stop this. Um, when we talk RO or reverse osmosis, most people think desalination plants, you know, in Israel, uh, California, mm -hmm. Texas, Florida, places like that. And, you know, you're, you're, you're dealing with a brine solution, salt, uh, and everything. For here, it, it is a low pressure, which is opposite of typical reverse osmosis. And uh, it is uh, non-brine. Uh, but it does have a theoretical limit. And so how this will operate, we'll walk through some of that. I wanted to show you show you what we had laid out here is the technology. You know, one to two people will be able to run this plant. And that is that is critical. And so, you know, when we talk about hiring hiring new employees, what do you need now? So we were in front of 600 students this past year, and, you know, even at middle school, we're talking to them about a future uh, in the water industry because our workforce is aging out. Uh, me at 62, even if I work eight more years, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people that are 20-plus years like myself at the Water Authority, uh, and we only have 62 employees right now to manage 28,000 customers. So an aging workforce is, 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 is a key uh, issue that we're looking into. So trying to get uh, students to come in, we need biochemical, physical, um, cyber, uh, IT work. We need people that are not just putting a shovel in their hands. A lot of people think, hey, I got to work for the Water Authority. You know, I'm dealing with, you know, digging in the ditch, uh, things like that, and that is, certainly moving away as technology, you know, grows up in our industry and changes. And uh, we need some really sharp minds coming in uh, to help out with this. But, you know, uh, a basic building, uh, this is this is the layout here. You have another view. You see the Bioscience Center on the left. You see the facility uh, there in the middle, but you see tankage in the back. You've got you know, the short elevated tank right over there, ground storage that, you know, had the seeds, the water coming in. And then you have the finished water tank that's buried. That's almost 2 million gallons of water there. Uh, one of the challenges we reuse is storing it to your customers need it. The, the beauty of this setup here is unlike the situations where you've had in Florida and it goes to multiple golf courses. Well, what happens when you get two inches of rain in Florida? They don't need the reuse water. So you treated it and then you have to discharge it, which is you know pretty expensive to do that. This is what they call an industrial reuse, where it's only going back to industry. And so um, it has a great application because Rivian is re requiring a, a, a good bit of water, especially when they bring the battery plant in in the 2030s. Uh, there'll be a lot of water usage and needs then. And so uh, we'll be able to supply that uh, at a, at a uh, attractive price, being non-potable and don't have to go back to the reservoir. Uh, we're looking at site limit multiple times, which is very good as well, excuse me. So that's kind of the layout. Everything inside is modular. Uh, the technology is getting where it's, it's, it's constructed and in, in, in a manufacturing place on skids. So you have issues with the skid, you pull it out, you pull another one in, uh, very you know plug and play type uh, for the water industry. Uh, the schematic on the right is just you know a, an initial uh, look at how water comes in, potable water comes into the industries. You got sanitary water. And, and let me describe sanitary water without being gross. Hopefully, y'all, uh, your food settled for the night. But sanitary water is poopy water, chunky water, dirty water. It's what we call it. 
Industrial water is like from Meta, you get from your cooling blowdowns. Uh, it doesn't have any of the, uh, of the nasty biologicals in it. And so what, what we've done and worked with our industries out of Stanton Springs is we've asked them to separate those. Mm-hmm. So all the, the potty water, it comes in and it goes to the Emmons facility and it has advanced treatment. And then it's even brought back to the Reeves for another run through and it can be utilized. The industrial water, which is the cooling water, goes straight to the reuse facility. And that allows us to run it through either ultrafiltration or RO and send it right back, uh, which is a whole lot less expensive. And RO is is tremendous in what it can remove the membranes there. And so they get a high quality, uh, non-potable water that they can use in all their processes and wash downs uh, and it's safe. In our in our goal here, you see, I, I'm not one of those that always talk about net zero because I don't know if you can really get to zero, but I really believe that you can get it down uh, where you can be recycling all our water in that tight little industrial park down there uh, to where we're uh, saving that. And that takes the demand off of the supply side. So Mike. Our, yes, ma'am. So one of the questions that was asked um, in the chat, um, and it has to do with the power sources. Um, do you, have you considered using any solar or wind to power for your power grid uh, at this plant? Well, you know, EMC, who will be the uh, power provider here, not Georgia Power. Uh, Georgia Power was on the original uh, Takeda facility. And then everything is moved to Walton EMC. You got the big solar farm over in Rutledge or north of Rutledge. Uh, I, we haven't approached that yet, Nancy. I'm sure we'll look at it. I mean, we, we've got now, since we started buying property down there in 07, almost 400 acres. But a lot of it is wetlands and buffers. So mm-hmm. we own a large part of the, the little river on both sides in order to protect that corridor. Um, but um, uh, it's always an option. Uh, but this, the, the low pressure uh, RO uh, is not at quite as much power hungry as the high pressure uh, one. And, you know, like I said, this plant is up to 5.5 MGD being gallon today. Um, that's a lot. That's equivalent to what we're serving uh, 28,000 customers with today. But it's not, a, it, it won't be at 20 million gallon plant in the future is kind of isolated to to the industrial part but that's a good question i think it's certainly something we could possibly do in the future i just don't know how uh i just hadn't got that far into it nancy on solar as far as what would it take to to actually run this so i know uh, meta has um meta has some solar powering so this might be something to just you know, reach out to them and see how there is how what their usage is and how how to work through that. We had another question that just came through. Um, okay, so how much water will be released into the Little River? It's a fairly small stream at two seventy eight. Are you working with Wildlife Resources about releasing the treated water and how best to do that? Yeah, it's a creek. Really, I mean, you know, the headwaters is probably two and a half miles up the road in Social Circle, uh, just just south of Standards Color there a little ways. Yeah, that's uh, right now we haven't released a single gallon into the Little River. Uh, we've been working and and sending it back to the, the Yellow River facility to keep that uh, up and running. Uh, so when Rivian comes online, yeah, we'll... Uh, We'll certainly have to consider that. I mean, we we permitted and, and were commissioned by the state of Georgia to release 1.25 into the river now. Uh, you know, right south of us, it turns into a pretty significant swamp uh, there. So we are having to meet all permit requirements. Now, we do have uh, the most stringent wastewater requirement, discharge requirements in the state of Georgia. And so we would have to follow those. A lot of sampling takes place for that. But um, yeah, the, the max on this, the, on the Inman's plant, the actual wastewater, if we didn't have the reuse, 
uh, would be 3.75 million gallons a day. That would be would be the max that we could ever discharge according to the state EPD. We've done 319 study, a TMDL study, uh, just looking at fecal sources there. A lot of uh, the property upstream from us are hobby farms, uh, several acres where they've got a horse or a couple of horses, cow, and you know if you can't keep vegetation on it, everything flashes into the little river when you have a rain event. And so that's that's a source there. Uh, we certainly wanted to make sure that we were not going to become a source uh, as well. So we've got alternatives, Nancy, that if we have issues like that, that we can send it somewhere else. So we have one more question before we uh, let you go here. And that is, what are the sources of the 3.2 and 2.1 MGD inputs Will the operation constitute any inner basin transfers? Hmm. Yeah, and these numbers are, are not final numbers. They've been reduced way down uh, from here. Uh, talking about inner basin transfer, uh, we do, uh, you know, uh, we are in the old Muggy River Basin. Uh, when we go over here to the Little River, uh, you know, when we discharge into the Little River, it will be an interbasin transfer. Uh, we have discussed that pretty thoroughly with the state of Georgia. There was no concern right now because it's, uh, the treatment goes back to the Yellow River. It stays within the Old Muggy Basin. So as it's recycled until we get to a point where we have to purge the system, uh, it could be sent back to the Yellow River and, and keep it within the Old Muggy Basin. But if we ever discharge down into the creek into the Cascade, uh, that is an inner basin transfer. But thankfully, the Oconee and the Oakmore joined back together at the Altamaha for one river basin. So I think that was some of the states uh, allowing that was because it did come back together. The Little River or the Oconee didn't go into a separate basin. So, so far, those are the, those are the questions we've had in our chat. Um, I want to be respectful of your time and the uh, um, and the members on the on the call. We said about thirty minutes. It's been about thirty minutes, but um, are there is there anything else that you'd like to share with us that perhaps we can do with you at the water authority or how we can work together or something that you think is uh, important for us to maybe. Um, get out to our membership. Well, I'm, I'm sorry I got too detailed. I mean, you know, this is- Oh no, I think this call. is, I think we could have a whole, we could keep going forever. Yeah, you know, and and and, and just real, I'll, I'll fly through it real quick. This is set up for how it works between the, the thing. The interesting thing is we had to create a, and do a micro tunnel under I-20 in order to get the pipes back and forth uh, rather than just receiving. And so we, we had to, uh, build this eight foot tunnel, which was the first tunnel in 35 years on I-20 East uh, here with this eight foot Iseki uh, tunnel boring machine here. Uh, this is if you this is 450 feet from the north side of I-20 uh, to the south side of I-20 where you can see the daylight at the end of the tunnel. And just real briefly here, uh, these tunnel boring machines, it's like watching paint dry, but they're very effective. It took 31 days to get that 400 feet. And uh, so pretty, pretty labor intensive um, work for us, uh, getting that 450 feet across with six pipes in there uh, was $10.8 million. So what we do is real expensive. So that's, that's a challenge. Here looking at this in, in, in greater detail is the Rivian layout north of I-20, which is Stanton Springs North. Morgan and Newton, probably most of y'all have heard of all the issues going on with there. Uh, you see Takeda here south of I-20 and you see Morning Hornet. And I don't have an updated picture for Bay Mare, which is the second campus, but you can see Rivian is really a, a pretty massive uh, footprint here. I will say that that my two years of working with them, I do believe they're they're very environmental oriented. And, uh, you know, I think we need to take advantage of that as a community. Um, so 
um, new growth pace for new infrastructure. We kept telling them, you know, if you want to come and you want all this reuse and you want all this stuff, you'll have to pay for it or you need to find a way to pay for it. I didn't feel like we could put that on the back of our rate payers in our community. And uh, we stood our ground and then we, because we don't receive any tax dollars. So the other three counties in the Stance Springs area, um, you know, have not paid a penny into the water and sewer infrastructure to serve in these large industries. So quite a deal for them. Uh, but uh, we just felt like mom and pop didn't need to pay with high rates uh, for that. And so we keep our rates down here on the yellow line uh, underneath the 36 utility average. Uh, we, we try to do that. Leaks is where I was going, um, you know, of how to determine and check if you have leaks, running torts, things like that. Those things really make a difference. Uh, people might not think so, but it really is a water main break every two minutes. Uh, you know, 82 gallons, you know, just probably 15 years ago, it was almost 136 gallons a day per person for per capita. Uh, you got, you know, only 9% or, uh, of the population is served by large systems, which were considered a small, medium, um, you know, uh, small or uh, is under 10,000 or 3,000 customers. And you still have, you know, uh, several million people on wells. And so um, to give you, for instance, uh, here, uh, Lake Varner in totality is about 4 billion gallons of water in capacity. And so you see, you know, every day you, you know, across the United States, we lose almost one and a half times or one and a third times of Lake Varner to loss. And so that's huge. And that, that's because of aging infrastructure. Uh, and the, the funding to replace that would be in the trillions of dollars, but we need to do it. Uh, <clears throat> I got this book when I was 20 something years ago, and it just shows you on the left side, you got these uh, little uh, circles here, and you can see what, a, what a, even a pinhole leak can do for you. You know, you can lose 120 gallons a day, 3,600 gallons a month. A typical family of four for the for the water and sewer authority uses about 4,800 gallons of water a month. So you move up to the second size leak there, and you're you're almost doubling what a, a family uses. So fixing leak <laughs> and finding those are real important. Sorry, I'm 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 running through that. I had a video on how to do that. Um, you know, most of the water is surface water. Everything below <laughs> above Columbus, Macon, and Augusta is typically surface water, surface water. Everything south of that depends on aquifers and ground source. Um, but, you know, the number one industry in the state of Georgia is agriculture. And where's a lot of that grown? It's grown down in South Georgia around these aquifers. So they're really important to, to maintain and protect. And it's just, we've had some improvements. Uh, you know, we've done that little by little, but we, it takes awareness. It takes us really paying attention and all of us can help. Uh, you know, what little you can say makes a big difference. Here's our water monster where we go. Uh, we take it. It can hold 1,440-something 20-ounce uh, water bottles that fill up. We usually go to all the, the races, Cheerios and Fuzz Run and places like that. We get an opportunity to share and talk about uh, what we love and, and, and do. And, uh, you know, um, it's, it's really important. And this is what uh, I thought if I had enough time, I could give you a real quiz. But anyway, that's Nancy. I'm sorry I took up so much time. Oh, no, this is fascinating. And, uh, you know, it just it, I, I think that what's important for us is to figure out how we can continue the conversation and how we can continue to work together, because this is it, it's it's important that we we conserve and that we look at ways that we can um, educate the public. That That's what we are about is trying to be a resource for the community. Um, I will say that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Theodosia, but it's um, the um, Cheerios Challenge Earth Day event is April 20th. And so my, uh, Mike, mark your calendar because we're going to it's going to be Earth Day celebration again with the Cheerios Challenge. And I know last year the um, Blue Monster was there and we um, hope you'll be there again this year. So thank uh, you. 
for your time. I, you know, and, and please, uh, we want to be held accountable. And if you have questions, uh, go, go, come to us. We'd love to. I mean, we're, you know, open, open records, transparent. We'll share whatever we need to take as much time with you. If you want tours, we can take you to our plants and some, some of our other facilities. Come look at it, watch the reuse facility built. Anything like that that we can do, we, we're, we're, we're here to help serve the community, and we certainly uh, want to be held accountable and make sure that we're doing our part because we can't ask you to do it and not do it ourselves. So, Thank you very much. Anybody have any last-minute questions um, for Mike? All right, hearing none. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it.